hello youtube welcome back to my channel here we're going again with a new video <sighs> i'm excited excited that my online store is getting there it's ready i have all the products uploaded i just have to press view for april 10th on saturday might do it friday night just to be ready for saturday but i have a lot of new items i have a lot of restock on a lot of items I did say that I'm changing the tip boxes of so you guys will get more tips same price so in this video I had a little bit of frustration with these nail tips these are the the double XL um, secret tips which are their taper tips like coffin so we're figuring out what I'm gonna call them if I'm gonna call them this c-curve coffin tip or the c-curve taper tip i think it's gonna be taper tip um so have you guys ever had an issue where your nail tip just won't stick you see that just some nail glue spray i mean nail glue dryer spray i have some available in my online store so this doesn't happen with everyone it's just some clients nails don't i really think it's because their hands are cold her hands were cold as hell let me tell you so i feel like maybe that's why the glue takes longer to dry because the nail surface is really really cold so that's why i use my nail glue spray and then but i have another tip for you guys so have you guys um done like you know the um when you cut out with an exacto knife like a like you know like a v cut or a slanted cut whatever it is everyone that i've seen dips their their knife or when you do the netting effect for the like snake snake effect or mermaid effect or whatever you know the netting everyone dips it into the powder and i'm just like no i decided to dip mine in the monomer i feel like it left a better cut a cleaner cut and then it's easy to scrape it off the nail the nail tip or whatever you're working on i was just like everybody wants to dip it into the powder no like i don't like how it looks i feel like i have to put so much pressure to scrape off the acrylic that's stuck on the nail tip and with the liquid it just scrapes right off i don't have to put too much pressure and then i could um i don't do it when the nail turns matte i do it when the nail the monomer and the liquid don't run down the nail so if i see that my nail my my application is still like moist and it's not but it's not moving that's when i decide to cut because if i cut once the nail turns um basically like matte i feel like i'd have to apply more pressure and then i'm scared what if i cut the client like i'm just scared that's one of my fears like what if i put too much pressure and boom the knife slides and slice slice her damn finger so you'll see that when i get there it's super easy i think it looks better you get a lot of acrylic off the nail tip in case you want to do like a clear nail and you don't have to file anything off i don't i think whenever i do that method i don't go back in and file just because i feel like it looks perfect already i'm using my nail files also and then um i think later on i have another little filing technique that i've been using that i feel like i finish um filing nails faster it's just a technique that i've been doing with several drills but now i have my own special drill box drill tip box oh no oops ah. drill carbide box so i use all these carbides for removals for prepping everything you need so you'll see them later once we get to the nail file no filing so how's everybody doing you guys i just keep asking that huh but hopefully everybody's doing well and staying healthy being productive if you have something to do go do it like literally stop thinking overthinking about it if you need to go clean your old room go clean your room if you need to do laundry go do your laundry don't just let it sit 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 trust me once you're done with it you'll have your mind should be 
you know, blank, should be more relaxed and you will be able to have a better attitude just because you've already done the things you had to do. Because trust me, <clears throat> there's been times where I just, I have so much clothes, but it's mainly work clothes, work clothes that I mess up because I get, you know, bleach on me or color or something, you know, because I like cleaning with bleach too. So a lot of my clothes is messed up. So that's why I have so much clothes so I can just whatever them. Um, and sometimes I end up having so much clothes in the dirty basket that when I do laundry, I'm there for like three, four hours because I fold and hang everything at the laundromat, you guys. I don't have, I, I mean, I do have a washer dryer home, but at my dad's apartment and I just, I'm too lazy to drag down the basket down to my dad's apartment because his little washroom is so small, but whatever. So if you need to do something, go do it, girl. Don't be lazy. Go do it after you watch my video <laughs> so here are my um, foil sheets that I have also on my online store this is the way I keep them and then put them back in the baggie um I feel like I put too much out of the pink foil I wasted it I don't like putting the stuff back just because you know dust flies around and <clears throat> it may get soiled with acrylic or something so I just don't put it back but I feel like I wasted a whole little corner of this paper I love using it the, the, you know how I like how it looks like let's say like this pink foil on top of like a pink close to it I think it looks pretty and then, then when you put matte coat on it I just think that effect looks so cool I think we did do this now matte <clears throat> so in this video I am using my acrylic system so I'm using my monomer I'm using my um, satin clear powder dual purpose powder so I use this powder mainly for solids. If they don't have too much glitter, I just use this one. It's not as clear as the, as the copolymer blend. So if you want clear, super clear results, use the clear, crystal clear. But if you want just like, you know, like a little bit of clearness, but you have mostly um, flat colors, I will recommend using the satin clear or that or the satin clear for like the fills like this where you put the clear on the nail bed and with since my acrylic i mean my liquid is ema you know you need less liquid than other ones so basically like look it runs a little to the side but it's super perfect um one thing that i tell people a lot is that don't go right away putting your beads onto your nails I say wait till you see all the mon monomer run to all the acrylic when it's on your brush. I recommend literally, since we speed up these videos, you guys don't see that. But basically, when you pick up your bead, every but wait, every powder has a different consistency. So basically, when you pick up your bead, every acrylic some acrylic right away you see that the that the liquid went to all the acrylic right away and it turns into a smooth like super wet looking bead and it starts running so if that happens that means you're picking up too much liquid so what you want to do is basically you have to learn every single acrylic brand that you are using because they all do not work the same so my typical counting it will be 10 seconds minimum and 35 seconds the longest to hold a bead on your brush so my acrylic you'll have to for the copolymer blend which is the crystal clear i recommend 30 to 35 seconds the best is 35 seconds but it all depends the size of the brush you're using you know how much liquid you're picking up and all that stuff like when i use my not polish that takes like 20 seconds 15 to 20 seconds when i use um the model ones that takes like a long time it takes i think i've had sometimes a liquid in my in my brush for like 40 seconds or 60 seconds almost a minute because if i put it on the nail right too quick it will just be super super runny and go all over the place so just think about that you know these videos are sped up so obviously you guys don't see how much how much i mean not how much, or how long 
the the monomer and the powder is actually sitting on our brush so this is a size number 16 and my AB 16 brush um, so you have to basically relearn not relearn but keep in mind and then sometimes I do that weird thing where I tap tap it or wiggle it and you and I'll be able to see that the liquid is actually spreading a little faster to all the but as you can see look how much control I have when I let my liquid and my powder you know like come together like you know like how do I say this <laughs> hope I make sense but this is the only way that I'm able to like sculpt it and mold it the way I want and smooth it and it's not lumpy because some people want to work really fast and I'm like no take your time like look how smooth that is I'm not gonna have to file for too long you know but that's a little tip I have for you guys here's another tip you'll see this one with this nail this is what I was talking I think about in the beginning of the video where you carve out with the exacto knife so as you can see I do have my bead a little bit wetter than the one before just because it was just gonna be half of the nail so I leave in order for me to get a perfect cut the acrylic has to be a certain amount of thickness so this is gonna be the cuticle it's a little thick almost like I did the ring finger so I'm gonna get my exacto knife dip it in monomer and then cut look how easy and look how all of the acrylic is basically coming off like super easy I'm gonna do it on the other side already dipped it but when I wet the exacto knife I get a cleaner nicer cut and I still am able to like kind of go through smooth it out because it's still wet I do it before the bead turns um, matte I'm gonna do it again with this color so when I do colored acrylics I wait till the acrylic stops being runny so it's like if you look at your acrylic when you're applying it like this you can still see it move just slightly so once I see it stop you know like running that's when I do my cut especially with colored acrylics it's easy to do it on nudes for some reason but like colored acrylics takes a little longer just because you know it has pigment added to them but look look when I dip my exacto knife into the monomer you see how basically almost all of it came off super easy it just like glided off look nice it's already perfect I'm just making sure it looks even on both sides <clears throat> but it's super easy it's, I think it's better when you dip your tool into the liquid than to dip it into the powder and then try and cut I do uh, I know I tried it and I feel like it was a mess. I feel like I was putting too much pressure. And my fear was that I could have cut the client. <clears throat> oh my God, I'm losing my voice. But yeah, you guys, that's like some of the tips I have for you guys. I know that like I've said it before in like my videos that I'm not here to do tutorials. I just like showing and recording myself how I do nails because I do learn from myself when I watch my own videos where I'm like, why did I do that? You know? <clears throat> so sometimes you know it, it helps me you know um make my work better it helps me like oh i shouldn't have done that or why did you know like it just helps a lot and it helps a lot of people also because some people learn more from watching than from me from someone saying something so get what you can from my videos i'm not here to teach you i'm just showing you my passion my hobby my my career because this is what I do for a living you know <laughs> this is what pays my bills look how cute that foil is you know I also like applying this foil with um transfer foil like sometimes like let's say I've had one time where I forgot to put the foil underneath the encapsulated nail and the client was like, you forgot the foil. And I was like, oh my goodness, I did. So what I did was just get transfer foil and just placed it on top. And it looked super perfect. And then just top coat it. And that's it. It stayed on pretty well. But as, as you can see, if I would pick up a super wet bead, or if I didn't let my acrylic 
um i mean my monomer go through all my um powder you think i would have this much of control with my my powder and stuff with my sculpting no i wouldn't like i think i did this one a little wet i didn't let it get all the way and once i placed it you know it's it's moving around too much like look at it flowing down so that's why wait at least 30 to 35 seconds you see how some of it fell that's because it's this bead was too too wet so i have no control the acrylic wants to go where it wants to go wherever you know so sometimes let gravity do the work so if you see your acrylic is dripping like that just move your finger pointing down so that all the acrylic just flows down that's all you have to do but i just don't like it running into my cuticle or anything like that I don't know why my my damn friend client always gets a fucking bruise on her thumb. She's so rough. Mm -mm. But see, like, how much control I have with this acrylic because I let my liquid run into all my powder. You see, like, it's not flowing too fast. It's just flowing enough for me to still work on my cuticle and then for me to mold it and sculpt it down. Like that's the type, that's the consistency you want when you're working with an acrylic. You know, you want it to be workable for you. Don't make your life hard. <laughs> and you see my the nails are not super thick. They're just perfect enough to, you know. So when I get to filing, I don't have to file too much. It's just like a retouch, like a little quick touch up to smooth, you know, you know. <laughs> Hopefully these tips make your little life better when doing nails. So this is the drill kits I'll be having. I'm missing one of the carbides, which is a smooth it. This tip cone, I mean, <laughs> this carbide bit that's a cone. Um, oh my God, it changed my life and my cuticles. It makes the cuticles look so flush and clean. And you don't have to go over it more than three times because if you're going more than three times on a on the cuticle, that means your cuticle area is too thick. So I try to literally flush the cuticle when I'm applying the acrylic. I just like that area to be smooth because I get less lifting and all that. But I do like my egg apex to be a little higher and then you know the tips to be thinner. So can see i'm just doing the sidewalls the tips shaping the outside of the nail first i guess i'm teaching you guys something but to me this is a tip this is a tip that i'm will, that i'm like will make your life easier so as you can see i get so i can get super close to the cuticle and you see i go like once twice maybe the most three times but if i go over more than three times that means i did that cuticle area too thick so as you can see look and i'm not even taking off any of the you know the foil because it's a perfect thickness but look how flush the acrylic looks on the cuticle it makes it look so much neater the grout is better it's easier to remove any lifting if they do have any so now with this bit i'm only gonna hit the center of the nail like the top middle so as you can see I'm looking from the side to make sure that they have a nice apex that the that has the same thickness all of the nails have the same thickness so i'm only hitting the middle part right now because this one's a little thicker than the rest i do have because i encapsulated the tip and you know like i don't know whenever i do these i always end up doing them thicker <clears throat> but as you can see like i hit the i'm looking at my sides and only working in the middle part that's what i want to see that's even and then after this basically if you will look at them from the front view it will look like a box on the sides i don't i don't like it to look like a box i like it to look a nice curve you know be smooth so once i'm done with this step which this carbide bit is in my drill bit box i get my sm the smooth it and then <laughs> I think it's funny because I tell my friend, you marry the sides to the center. It's funny because I'm teaching her how to do nails. So I will tell her, I'm, I'm marrying the sides to the center. 
because <laughs> I didn't know how else to express that. So basically, I hit my sides, and then if you see, I go to the center. I go to the center, so it gives me a nice little curve from side to side. Hopefully, that makes sense. Um, but these are things that I would, if I would teach classes, I would say it in detail and show you in detail. But understand that I feel like that kind of information you have to pay for it because imagine all these years that I've you know had to teach myself and you know trial and error these are things that you just come up on your own and stuff so it's like mm, I, I'll charge for it because it took me a long time but I know a lot of people would appreciate the tips that I give now so that's all I have for you guys. Um, stay tuned for the online store updates. I will be sending an, um, an email for everyone that has subscribed to the online store. Or if you have purchased on the online store, I will be sending a coupon over for you guys to get a little discount on all these goodies. But only if you, um, you will get this email only if you have purchased something previously. Because I guess like I did not realize that people... Um, you can subscribe to get emails and stuff like that so to get updates so a lot of some people got the news about <laughs> i was telling her don't help me because <laughs> she was trying to put her finger a certain way and i'm like don't help me and i'm trying to explain to her watch when you do nails you're gonna start wanting that like don't help me don't you know when people clients try to help you when you apply a form and you're like trying to put the form on and it's and they try to move their finger to shove it in the nail form. Like, don't help me. I didn't ask for your help. But it's funny. And I was telling her that before, I used to just be patient and not say nothing and try to grab their finger and try to... But now, since I've been doing it for so long, now I'm like, uh, you don't need to help me. I got it. Don't worry. I didn't ask for your help. What are you doing? I tell them straight up, like, why is your hand... Like, you need to relax your hand and stuff like this, but... I feel like before I wouldn't say none of that stuff. I would just work around them, maneuver my wrist and my hands. But you have to understand that you need to be doing this for longer, for a long time. And if you want to last, you know, for the rest of your life doing nails, you need to take care of your wrist, you guys. Because sometimes when you're forcing someone's hand down too much, that's too much strain on your wrist. I started noticing that my wrist sometimes burn. If, if I'm actually like let's say the first client was just stiff as hell and I was just gripping her hand and I kept turning it and telling her like relax and she just couldn't sometimes it's not their fault they could have arthritis carpal tunnel tendonitis so I try to work with them but at the same time I have to think about it because it will mess me up for the rest of the day and then my wrist hurts for the rest of the day so take care of your wrist you guys like if you are not working I recommend wearing a brace, icing your wrist, but it's because I actually do nails for a living. I literally do nails from Monday through Saturday. I, and then, you know, in between I have hair clients and in between I have um, haircuts. So I do everything. So I don't just do nails, but nails is what has taken over um, what I've known. What basically, I'm more known for nails now than the hair and, the, and all that other stuff I used to do. So I do tell my clients, you need to relax your wrist because you want me to last another 10 years, right? I tell them because what if they just keep messing up my wrist? I'm like, nah, I have to last you guys another 10 years before I retire. <laughs> so yeah, that's a that's funny. <sighs> it looks like I've talked throughout this whole video, you guys. Oh my goodness. That's the first. I'm just excited. And I have a whole hour break right now. So hopefully you guys learned something from me. Um, hope you guys like this video. I know these are short nails. You guys like watching long nails. The next set hopefully is a long set. And stay tuned. For the online store. I'm almost there you guys. I'm almost ready to upload. And have all these new goodies up. Um, I have some cute rhinestones for you guys. I have a bunch of stuff. A bunch of new stuff. So, stay tuned. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And hopefully I fill out this description box today. <laughs> hopefully I get to upload it. 
and work on my little description box before I upload too. So, oh, excuse me, I, oh, I've been getting hiccups all day. So, hopefully, hopefully, things come back to normal. You know, I got my vaccine, but it sucks because if I think about it, I could still get someone sick. I could still get it. It's like, in my head, I'm like, why did I even do the vaccine? But no, I got my vaccine just because it's more for me, more for my clients, because I cannot afford to miss any more work. You know, because COVID messed up a lot of stuff, and I'm still trying to recuperate. I feel like it's going to take me a whole year to recuperate. So I've been working my ass off, trying to pay my debt off, so... You know, it's gonna be working hard this whole year and hopefully next year I get my little my first year of working and I really wanna take a whole month off just for myself and do nothing. <laughs> hopefully that happens. Let's speak it into existence. So thank you for watching you guys and that's all I got for you. Uh-huh. So hopefully keep saying hopefully oh my goodness so bless y'all that's all i gotta say <laughs> bye